Hey everyone, it's me. So today we are outside and it is noisy. I'm so sorry. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I am a Canadian from Ontario, Canada, living in Kent, England. But guess what, fellas? We're in Ontario today. I am back in Ontario visiting friends and family. I'm so sorry. The, the neighbor like four blocks away decided he was going to mow his lawn at this exact moment. So please ignore him. I did a video a while back talking about the differences between British homes and Canadian homes and more specifically what my English house is like back in England. But while I'm here in Ontario, I want to show you guys what my parents' Canadian house looks like. So I'm not going to give you a full tour because that's annoying. I'm just going to show you like little specific things that are different between this Canadian or specifically Ontari Ontarionian house versus an English house. So without further ado, let's go. So the main reason my parents even bought this house really is for the backyard and it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, guess what? My sister has a dog. Hi, doggy. But they basically bought this whole place because of this particular view. You can kind of see we're up sort of on a hill, on the edge of a hill kind of thing happen in there. They've got this beautiful view and they've designed all these different sort of seating places. So there's some chairs by the pool. There's a like pavilion thing over there by the hot tub. You can also sit here and we've got a stone fire pit. We had a fire last night. We got some charred logs hanging out in there. You also have a dining table that you can have lunch or dinner or just constantly eat and it's just like this is this view which makes it really special so over here we have another shed in the background for like storage and stuff and you got a hot tub and then over here is probably like the newest design you've got chairs and a little table you can hang out here if it's kind of stormy and my parents are actually just closing up the pool for the summer but you can sit here in the loungers and again, look out at that view. Like I said, my parents are not rich. This isn't a rich person house. This is like a really special location house. But in Ontario, having a backyard, having a pool or a hot tub is not just reserved for rich people, basically. Hey, Dougie, are you, are you cutting the grass? Hey, buddy? That's fine, he's a little bit camera shy, that's okay. You just have a lovely day, pal. So no, this is not a rich person house. It is a one-story bungalow. But in Ontario, because the con I mean, the country is Canada as a whole is so big, you have so much more space. And you don't have to be a rich person just to have a nice backyard and a pool. So one of my favorite things here at the back door of the house, there's these chairs swivelly chairs i just went on a hike so i'm very much in my workout clothes please excuse that and it's nice you can just sit right here you get the views maybe have a drinky drink or a or a snack oh i could really go for a snack right about now anywho this is my parents backyard here in ontario it's beautiful it's special not all homes are like this but on average, it's much more likely that you will have some kind of backyard here in Ontario, especially in the towns and the villages. We don't live in a big city or anything like that. So if you were living, say, in Toronto, that might be very similar to living in London, but all the other towns and cities and villages, backyards are a thing that happen, and you don't have to win the lottery to have one. Now, one of the things I get asked a lot is about this room. So you got a TV, bookcase, my old desk, some shelving, a couch, an end table. However, you've got these smaller, higher up windows because this is the basement. This is the, what you call like a rec room. So it's like a second living room basically, but it is in the basement. So you gotta go up the stairs and out. Basements in Ontario, again, are pretty much required. I've never really been in a house before without a basement. However, in England, basements don't really exist. 
So I know, I know a lot of English people will say, ooh, you know, basements are gross and there's no light, there's no windows, it's like damp and dark and stuff. And that's really not the case in Ontario. That then leads to my old bedroom. So like a full size bedroom. We also have a little workout room behind there with like a treadmill and stuff. We've also got a bathroom, a storage room, and a laundry room down here in this dingy, dark, disgusting basement. So let's go check out the laundry room. So you come down the hallway here in the, in the basement to the laundry room. So laundry rooms for everybody are gonna look a little bit different. We've got a separate fridge. So that's like the alcohol fridge because that's important. We've got another freezer for, you know, larger frozen foods more storage. However, to this side is the laundry room sort of space. So you have a utility sink, you've got a bunch of storage. We also have this counter, which is really great for letting stuff dry that just kind of needs to be laid out. You've got space for iron. We've got space to hang stuff up, more space to let things hang. And now these beasts look at them. In Ontario, it's really common to have a separate washing machine and a separate dryer. I find in England a lot of people either don't have a dryer or they have what's called like a washer dryer or um, something that's combined with the washing machine which is actually what I have. But I find that the washing machine dryer combo never really gets your stuff dry which is annoying. But here it's hard to imagine how big they are. Here's the size of my foot and here's the size of both of them. That doesn't really help. Anyway, it's just a, it's a washing machine. You can fit maybe four small children in that drum. It's got all sorts of knobby stuff and it senses how wet the stuff is. And anyway, it's really cool, but you also have a dryer. So while a laundry room like designs like this may not be super common for all homes in Ontario, it is really common for homes to have a separate washing machine and dryer and you will not see them in the kitchen unless it is like a special circumstance. But in my lifetime, I've never seen them in the kitchen like they do in the UK. So say goodbye to the laundry room. I'm going back to England soon, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss this space, you guys. I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss you. More importantly, I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Welcome to the bathroom. My parents' house has three bathrooms. This is like the main floor guest sort of bathroom, whatever. Check out that weird bird and a, and a what, what do you call those thingies? Painting, anyway, check out over here. So you've got our sink and we have our outlets. So they, they have this little light in here just in case in the night it's kind of hard to see, but otherwise you've got fully regular outlets in here. It's not a big deal. All homes will have them pretty much in Ontario. What's up? I'm still in my hiking gear. Hope that doesn't bother you. Shower is here, toilet here. But even though it's like a fairly small bathroom, we still have power. It's just kind of expected in all the bathrooms here in my parents' house. There are outlets, typically by the sink, because the idea is you can charge your toothbrush, you can plug in your hair dryer, you can use your hair straightener, whatever. But there are outlets. And guess what? Nobody dies. Nice. Another thing that's a little bit different and lame that no one's going to care about the light switches for bathrooms does not need to be outside of the room. So this light is the hall light because guess what? It's in the hallway. So that controls the hallway light. This also has a dimmer because my dad loves a dimmer. But in the bathroom, which we are back in again, these switches are different parts of the lights. You can have them in the bathroom rather than, I know a lot of English homes will either have it outside the door or they'll have some sort of pull cord thing from the ceiling. It's all, it's all, it does feel a little bit medieval. Don't take that the wrong way, but also y'all need to figure out your light situation. Another thing that's a little bit different is this 
hole in the ground, just hanging out in the ground. What does it do? It's one of the best inventions in the world. Air conditioning comes out of it or heating. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, I miss it a lot. The other thing here, we've got some windows. We pop these bad boys open a little bit. Oh, stay up please, maybe like that, nope. Beautiful. We've got this kind of contraption. So a lot of the windows here in Ontario, especially I think most of Canada, is you have to have a screen. Oh yeah, we need to unlock it. Pop that boy open. You um, have to have screens because Canada is a country of many, many insects, many bugs. And this is a screen. You can already see it's there's some sort of fluff from one of the plants. So it hasn't gone in the window, it's stuck on the screen. And you can't just like dash out of the windows like you can in England. So some windows have this contraption, some have their own little thing. But either way, a lot of them tend to be crank windows and they have to have a screen typically. How does this work? I can't see past my own camera. Ugh. And then you've, you just lock it. Most windows have something similar. They're obviously not all the same. So windows need a screen and most homes have central air and heating. In the basement where we just were, there will be vents, but they'll be on the ceiling. So it'll pump down cold air or hot air. And it is one of the best inventions ever created. I think overall, homes in Ontario tend to be larger for a couple of reasons. Obviously, Ontario itself is larger than France and Spain combined. So it is a big place with a lot of space. So naturally, homes and backyards and things can be so much bigger because we just got more space. And Canada as a whole has a far smaller population than England and the UK. So less people, more space means you can have homes that have a dedicated laundry room or a basement all kitted out or a big backyard, big front yard, all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's easier to have. Whereas in England, you have a lot of stuff that we don't, but it's just less space, I guess. I think one of the things that I do miss a lot is having that laundry room because I hate having to look at laundry just sort of hanging in, and sometimes if you want to hang your laundry but you can't hang it out outside because it's raining all winter you have to get like a clothes horse in the house and for me that's going to need to be in the living room which I don't really want to look at just like drying clothes but I don't have any other space in my in my home in England so it has to be that or hang up upside, outside or you put it in the dryer but it won't fully dry. So it's kind of silly, but that's one of the things that I really miss the most other than this backyard. So those are some of the ways that my parents' Ontario house is different to a typical house in England, more specifically my house in the southeast of England in Kent. Obviously, homes are not all the same in Canada and they're not all the same in England, but these are some of the things that I have noticed that tend to be different between the two different types of houses. So if you don't mind, I'm probably gonna sit out here by the pool in the sun, in that Canadian Ontario sun, and try to get a little bit of a tan before I go back to England. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, bye!